Okay, um, I'm doing a bit of reorganisation in the shed at the moment, um, which means that I'm actually just moving the chassis around inside the shed. And whilst I was doing that, I thought I'd actually see if I could get the other suspension cylinder out. Which triggered me to think that maybe it's a good time just to quickly review the suspension system on the 2CV because it's not like other vehicles. Um, now, what I've done, so we've got the chassis here. It's basic ladder type chassis. Um, as we said before, the rear legs have, end of, have been chopped off because you don't need it. Um, I'm sure that's going to be an interesting challenge when I come to it. And you've got, at each end, you've got a, a sort of uh, the axle in the middle with two swinging arms. This obviously is the front. That would be the engine bay there, as you can see. So you've got a drive shaft, which I haven't yet removed. You may not um, be able to in the short term. So these are in swinging arms. And as they go over bumps, it moves up and down. Um, now, as it does so, I'm not sure how well this will show up under here. There is a bolt goes through here and through this eye. So that sits there. So as that arm moves up, that uh, lugs here with the bolt through moves that way and pulls this rod. And this rod is connected into this suspension cylinder which is on the side and you've got exactly the same setup uh, back there you'd have the rear axle sitting here um, with this rod um, into the rear arm exactly the same so this one here so you can sit so they sit, um, actually you can't sit on this one because it's underneath the arm at the moment, um, underneath here. But So they sit there and what you've got inside this canister is at the end of this rod, this rod here, it has a solid um, disc and this section here inside the canister has got a Big suspension spring exactly like the sort of things you see on the shocks on the back of a bike so as this pulls here this rod pulls out the disc compresses the spring so it's your basic sh uh, it's your basic spring and that's all it does see so that lifts up pulls the rod presses the spring or pulls this compresses the spring um, which obviously then uh, uh, takes the actual shock impact now from here to here is a shock absorber so that actually uh, damps the bouncing around you're going to get otherwise with this spring um, fighting against pull those arms uh, back down all right let me just get the uh, these are a pain in the ass to remove which is why they very rarely get removed um, and it's one of the reasons why I'm actually trying to remove them <laughs> because um, it's probably easier to do so while it's like this and at least I can actually free off the threads because what happens is they rust in place um, quite simply and that's what I've got here at the moment um, with these rods what you've got sitting in the end here um, is a bump stop it's just a big fat rubber donut um, that this suspension cylinder which is actually free to move about and rotate um, and move a little bit as well smacks backwards and forwards between these two bump stop rubbers um, and it's held centrally by this bar here which has a nut on each end and the nuts log again, lock against these two, this chassis uh, rail here 
but so what happens is that these things just rust up because they're underneath the car uh, they're directly behind the wheels they get all the salt spray um, and all the crud that comes off the road it's under the bodywork of the car nobody ever looks at them and they just rust to hell um, and the problem I've got here at the moment <coughs> is this rubber donut here is rusted onto this bar which means I can't get this out um, I'm just going to grab um, some parts and lay it out on the chassis so you can see what actually is comprised. I can't get into this, as I've said before, because it's it's welded in. You can buy the new parts, you can buy a new donut, uh, this, you can buy all the parts you need, but you have to grind these open um, to actually get inside and then weld them back up again. Uh, so it's a solid canister. And you can buy the end plates for them, as I say, you can buy all the bits, but it's just a pain in the ass to actually work on. Right, let me grab the bits. Okay, so here we have it. So this is the cylinder, the suspension cylinder off the other side. Actually, one of the reasons, the other reasons I want to take this off is these things are very heavy and uh, comprise a lot of the weight of the chassis when I'm moving it around. So it's easier to move it around with this off. So, say so the parts, what you've got is you have this rubber donut of a bump stop um, and you have this tube here. This tube here will slide along here and into the suspension cylinder, which holds it square and allows this, because this is going to move up and down a bit as it's pulled. Um, this will actually move up and down. Uh, and this eye bolt screws onto the end, like so. Um, and as I say, this is held, the th threads here hold this tube in place in this part of the chassis uh, that protrudes here. Now, these are 46 mil nut. Um, and I've only got one 46 mil spanner because I'm um, tight and they cost money. Um, but before, also on here, so this goes like that, and then it goes into here like that. And what happens, so actually I said it's, it, it rusts onto here, it doesn't. What it does is it rusts onto here. You can, it's, it's a loose interference fit um, and as I say what happens is that it rusts onto here now <clears throat> the thing is the way these come off is that and you probably can't really even see it down here um, maybe but here there's a slot cut into this one here so there's a tube into which this sits. So this goes through the tube in the chassis cross member here and here there's a slot cut out of it. It's not big enough to get this tube out of but it is big enough to slide this rod through. So what you do is you unscrew this nut here off the end of this thread here so that's where we are at the moment so you unscrew it whoops, off, and screw it off the end of that so it's then loose you then just pull this out of the end of here um, and the rubber bump stop will drop out At this end, you unscrew this nut off the end here. Why are we not focusing? Yeah, so you unscrew that off there. And then what you can do is you can slide this bar out of this hole, pull the whole thing this way, and you can pull this out of this tube, this metal one out of this 
So this is going to same thing here. So that will just pull out. So that's the theory. That's the open part. Um, as I say, they are just a pain in the ass um, because they rust. And so what's happened at the moment is this donut here has rusted onto this tube, which means that I can't. Although I have managed to get this down to the point where it's unscrewed, I can't pull this out because it's this rubber donut won't slide off the end, um, which basically means now that what I'm probably going to have to do is to actually get move this, get some push this down here and get a disc and just cut it down here turn it around and just cut the whole end off in the hope I can then pull this sideways enough to pop it out the end and take it apart um, and then get it out this end now that assumes I can get this nut off the end here um, now normally you might notice it's got a slots cut in the end here they don't normally have these you can see this does not have a slot cut in the end so clearly somebody's had this apart in the past and has decided that that allows you to hold this still whilst you unscrew the nuts because obviously what you're doing otherwise is you're trying to unscrew rusty nuts from rusty threads with no way of holding it still because these are designed to rotate freely so somebody's obviously decided the way to solve that is to cut a hole in the end so that you can shove a tool down in there um, and stop it turning. The problem is shoving a tool down there bends you probably can't really see it, bends the threads up here, so now I can't unscrew this. So I need to try and bend in this back or maybe just file off. A bit of thread so that I can unscrew this and take it off but first I need to solve this which um, probably first involves some more hammering with a punch um, but to do that I've got to get this nut back on um, which won't be easy um, up again you've got the same problem it's got the threads of chewed and distorted here so I need to try and get this on so that I can hold this in place solid and then try and beat it down and